Uh, sit down. Have a seat. Um, I'll stand. Am I in trouble? I wouldn't say in trouble. Yeah, I'd say f***ing fired. What are you talking about? We know you stole that copy from that Lucky Strike ad for us, and Sterling gave you all the credit. What he said. Oh, you guys have been watching Mad Men again. Um... So know what she's in for. Besides, you gotta let them know what kind We don't work in an ad agency, fellas. And if we did, I would be your boss. I'm sorry I said f***. It's okay. I'm not. You didn't say f***. F***. This is five things. This... Whee! Happy 2012, everybody! Yeah, I know the tree's still up. I bet yours is too. Shut up. Over the break, I did get a chance to see many of the movies that I talked about in the last episode, including Mission Impossible 4, which was produced by J.J. Abrams, who is returning to TV this spring with Alcatraz. On March 21, 1963, Alcatraz officially closed. All the prisoners were transferred off the island. Only that's not what happened. Of course, this is the guy who created Alias, Lost, Fringe, he's directed Star Trek, Mission Impossible 3, he produced Cloverfield. This guy has an eye for talent and a clear eye for good material. 302 men disappeared that night. They were never seen or heard from again. Until now. And with the two-hour premiere this month, expect nothing short of a great mystery. Since the story is about, like, ghost convicts who return from the past to commit more crimes, it's kind of like a bad guy of the week formula like X-Files. But also like X-Files, there will be a general overarching story that is sure to confound and confuse all of us. Also, Hurley is in it. I will include links in the link dump to trailers or commercials for all the shows I talk about. Of course, depending on where you live in the world, this show might be airing somewhere different or it might not be airing at all. That said, this show might be an American phenomenon. It's called Portlandia. Do you remember the 90s? Yeah. You know, people were talking about getting piercings and getting tribal tattoos. Yeah. And people were singing about saving the planet and forming bands. Yeah. There's a place where that idea still exists as a reality, and I've been there. Where is it? Portland. Oregon? Yeah. I've never been to Portland, so I can't speak for its 90s authenticity. It's about as far away from me as it could possibly be and still be within the continental United States. But Fred Armisen from Saturday Night Live and Carrie Brownstein from some bands that you've never heard of do a great job of putting together these sketches of really weird characters, many of whom they say do actually exist in Portland, Oregon. But if sketch comedy isn't your thing, and you want a little bit of real-life drama mixed in with some, like, fanboy rage, check out Comic Book Men coming to AMC. What do fanboys do when they grow up? Oh, you know what this one is. First Wonder Woman. They open a comic book store. Last year, AMC approached Kevin Smith and said, hey, you're a huge nerd, right? And he said, hey, I'm the one who gets to make fat jokes around here. And they said, oh, sorry. Well, anyway, we're thinking about making a reality show based in the world of high-priced, limited edition comics. What can you do to help? Santa Claus, Batman, and then Robin are the most recognized faces on the earth. Robin? Jesus, nowhere on that list. Well, it turns out Kevin Smith owns not one, but two comic book stores on both coasts of the United States, and he's got some staff that's pretty entertaining. In fact, they had already been hosting their own podcasts for months at that point. So AMC decided to just embed themselves with the troops, as it were, and they shot their series, Comic Book Men, in his secret stash store in Red Bank, New Jersey. You never think you're going to hold the first appearance of Wonder Woman, or as a comic book collector even hold a woman. Comic Book Men! Also coming to AMC, but in March, a month later, Mad Men finally returns after a 17-month hiatus. I'm living like there's no tomorrow, because there isn't one. You're looking at the finest ad men in New York. And this handsome fellow is Don Draper, the best creative director in New York. If you have not gotten into this show yet, there is plenty of time to do so. If you have a Netflix account, all four previous seasons are on streaming. And if you're turned off by the initial Don Draper is a huge chauvinistic pig storyline, keep watching. So much changes by the end of season four. I am so, so excited for season five. 
This is my favorite show on television. It's Bobby's birthday party Sunday. It's Jean's birthday. Did you want me to buy him or her a gift? And if Mad Men is my favorite drama, it's pretty easy to choose my favorite comedy, returning this month to NBC. Here's the thing. The way that you dress is making some people around the office uncomfortable. Really? Who? Not me. Now, depending on who you talk to, this might be the last season of 30 Rock. Alec Baldwin was spewing his mouth off a year ago and saying that this would be the last one. I don't think anyone has followed up and said it will definitely be the last one, but if it is, you know, all good things must end, and wouldn't you rather it end while it was still good? So, will we be getting new employee IDs? Because I'd really like to retake my photo. Good God, what happened? I was holding in a snart, and then right when she took the photo, don't you want to know what a snart is? I can tell you now, it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning. 30 Rock has consistently been one of the funniest, most solid, smart comedies on television. In fact, when I was watching an episode of Happy Endings last month and they made a joke about Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, I said, that's a 30 Rock joke right there, because that's how good that joke was. <laughs> and that does it for five things this week. Please check your local listings for any or all of these TV shows. I know I'll be watching. Follow me on Twitter at Sean B. Martin. Check out some of the links coming up at the end of the video for things that I've been up to, and I will see you next week. Hey guys, Sean V. Martin here, filling the side of the frame for you again. I have some things for you to check out if you're so interested. Up top there we've got the first episode of Rise of the Rebellion, a Minecraft Star Wars custom map that I played through with Ron Smalik. It's three parts, episode four, five, and six, of course. Below that we've got the most recent episode of Gordon Freeman Speaks, which is wrapping up probably within the next three weeks, I think. I mean, I've finished the game, I think it will account for another 10 episodes, maybe not even that many. So if you haven't gotten into it yet, make sure you check it out. And down there at the bottom, we've got the Minecraft B.O.B. build-off, which was part of the live stream I did last weekend. The challenge was a theme of the future. And coming up later today, you will get to see my entry into that competition, not linked on this video. It's a surprise. Thanks, guys.